Uh, hey guys, uh, how are you doing? I hope that in these challenging times, you are doing pretty well. So um, I am Indi Nazmul Hassan, the founder of Tensor Bundle. You will know me more or less. Um, I have been trying to reconnect you with the group members to uh, share our knowledge on antenna engineering. And uh, this is the purpose of arranging this webinar. So uh, today we're going to learn uh, from uh, from industry speaker resource person about the phased array system in HFSS. And uh, I hope that this webinar will give you some hands-on experience on designing the phased array in HFSS. I also believe that by arranging these types of seminars regularly in this group will strengthen our networking and also our uh, professional bond by sharing our mutual knowledge with one another. So without much further ado, let's begin our main session. So I am inviting uh, Joss from NSYS Incorporation. He's working as a senior application engineer right there. So hello, Nijas, how are you? I am fine, Hassan. Doing great. OK, so I'd like to request you to uh, introduce yourself briefly, and then maybe we can start the main session. Yeah. Hi, team. Uh, so my name is Nijas. I'm working as a uh, senior application engineer in ANSYS, supporting on or working on antennas, antenna array, radars, uh, 5G MIMO systems, those kind of areas. So my industry experience in such a way that the people who are <clears throat> designing the defense systems, people who are designing the antenna for IoT applications, 5G MIMO based base station antenna. So connecting with these people and if they are facing some challenges in terms of solving the problems, getting some issues on the technical side supporting those customers across the india and sometimes globally also and uh, today uh, we were planning to have a short meeting on phased array system that can be extended for 5g applications uh, if everything fine uh, shall i start the presentation sure so first of all, uh, if you take any kind of any numerical tool, it can be HFSS or it can be any other tool uh, that predominantly have a different solver to solve different types of problem. If you take a very complicated uh, model such as antennas and people are now working at the terahertz area. So you will have very complicated shapes, complicated geometry, and that you need to solve at very high frequency. But the FEM, FTTD kind of solvers, they are very good in the solving the complex problem. But the moment you go very high in the electrical size, then it requires more time and memory. Uh, that's a problem with the FEM and FTTD. So coming into uh, even bigger problems like uh, aircraft or uh, a system with a metallic system with multiple antennas or radar cross sections or uh, the dish antennas another thing where the integral equation solver can uh, take a lot of advantages they used to mesh only on the surface and you don't need a mesh on the air boundary so if you take a horn antenna you will have a horn antenna here and you have a big reflector over here but you don't need to mesh in between the area. That's the advantage with the IE solver. And if you take even bigger models, something like the uh, entire city, or if you take uh, bigger aircraft or bigger ships and multiple antennas, then you need a shooting and bouncing ray kind of a solver. So if you go upper and upper, the complexity of handling the simulation will be lesser. So it can take bigger areas, but you are compromised with uh, uh, the complexity of the problem. If you take one problem, something like uh, this, uh, the most of the simulation now with coming with the hybridization. What you're seeing over here is there is an antenna array, phased array on the mobile tower, and there is a big antenna tower comes over here. So 
people are simulating the FEM for the array and the rest of the parts with the IE solver. Similarly, you can see a blade antenna on top of an air, uh, aircraft where the blade antenna can simulate with FEM or IE and the, take, the other part can be simulated with SPR plus kind of solver. Okay, so now the hybridization is something like uh, some part will be solved using FEM, some part will be solved with IE, some part will be solved with SBR plus. So all solver in a single design will work together and solving one or other part of the geometry. So that's kind of a computational advantage you are now getting from different numerical tools. So coming into uh, the steps, how you will simulate a problem. First of all, you will create a CAD geometry. You will assign material, boundaries, excitation, simulation frequency, mesh settings, and other thing. And once you start solving the problem, the solver will start meshing this geometry. And either it will use the integral equation method or differential method and try to find the unknown quantities such as electric field, magnetic field, or surface currents. So those are the unknown this solver will calculate. One important factor you need to notice over here is all the solvers are working on the mesh, not on your CAD. So you need to be make very careful here. So if you are using brick kind of or staircase kind of a mesh, sometimes uh, if you model sphere, it will look something like this. But if you model with a, a triangular kind of mesh, it will more or less represent your actual geometry. So choose your mesh and uh, play with that one because CAD is one, but solving is different. Make sure these things in the computation things. If you put a garbage on the software, it will throw the garbage out. If you wise, if you are wise, then select the things properly. Coming into uh, the result, once you solve this unknown quantity such as electric field, magnetic field, or surface current, it will try to calculate the uh, uh, what is S parameter, what is electric field distribution, how this antenna system will radiate. These things are the output which we are interested in, uh, and this is the portion where the solver is working. Here the question comes whether what frequency I should mesh my structure it at lambda by five size in the operating frequency or lambda by 10. And then the confusion is that mesh is sufficient or not, or did I over mesh my structure? Coming into uh, HFSS, HFSS actually uh, works behind this particular algorithm called adaptive meshing. So you just have to create a, uh, a CAD model and give the solver to run it. It actually starts with a very coarse mesh, okay? And uh, wherever the fields are strong in the entire domain, that area it will start adding measure more and more. So over here, if I change to laser point, so these are the area where the electric fields are become very strong. That area it will add more mesh, and these areas they were the outside area. These areas are electric fields are not strong. It will not. You don't need a very fine mesh over there. So the adaptive meshing will make sure your mesh as much are perfect. And you can see with respect to the mesh, your S parameter is not changing much. So if you start from the beginning, you are getting very, very different mesh altogether. When mesh start converging, you can see that it will start converge to a particular S parameter. So you are checking whether the S parameter from the current mesh and previous mesh is that same, how much deviation you can give that determines the convergence. You can ask uh, convergence on S parameter. You can ask convergence on gain, efficiency, a lot of other things. So this is a one important thing. If you start solving any so using any software, make sure this parameter. Mesh is the one which determines your accuracy on the simulation side. Coming into phased array systems. Phased array system consists of a, a power divider. It can be series fed or corporate feed, different type of feeding systems are there. And this is power divider will connect to a switch. It can be an isolator, circulator, uh, then it will go to a phase shifter, then it will go to an uh, amplifier, then it will connect to an antenna array. So why you need a switch is mainly if you this system is working as a transmitter, the power divider section will send the signal to the phase shifter and goes, goes to the antenna. If the system works as a 
receiver system then it will goes to actually this system has the drawing has a problem but uh, finally it will comes to the same system and first oscillator will uh, circulator will come it will divert the signal into the receiver system rather than coming into uh, start uh, the feed in this transmitter side so this is a uh, an idea giving an idea of, okay this will have a power divider switch phase shifter uh, amplifiers phase shifters are one which control the beam steering of your antenna array and the amplifier which are using to reduce the side lobe of the antennas uh, antenna array systems so if you most of the time the side lobes are generated because of the edge illumination of the array so most of the people will uh, radiate this edge elements with a smaller power and uh, radiate more with the center element so that you will get a less side lobes so your energies are not wasting in other, other directions so normal workflow how to design a phased array system which start with the phase uh, feeding network so what you can do is you have to optimize your uh, power divider so you can create a port over here then the signal has to divide equally into two amps so what all things you need to be careful if you put one watt signal here it should be less uh, 0.5 watt let's assume this is a lossy lossless system so 0.5 watt has to be comes here 0.5 has to be comes here both should have a same phase from port to one to port to two and port to one to port to three should have a same phase then that is the re condition this power divider works fine at that particular frequency once your power divider works then you can use the same power divider at multi multiple places and make sure if you inject some power let's say 16 watt here all the output port should have one one watt okay and with the same phase so that's the first conditions once you uh, optimize this design with a by solving the different different geometry you can further combine combine the uh, complete power divider section something like this second one is uh, usually uh, the maxwell equations are applicable to the linear system means passive systems something like a non-linear system like phase shifter amplifier if you see an amplifier it has a diode or transistor in it to amplify the signal those are not solvable by a full wave 3d solve full wave system so you need to use a circuit simulator to incorporate the amplifications and phase shifting so you can model that in the circuit simulation so what you will do is you this is a power device complete system it will looks like a power divider then it will have a uh, attenuator phase shifter amplifier then a circulator then coming to an antenna so what you can do is you can design the uh, power divider then after the power divider you can uh, simulate this section where you have a phase shifter an amplifier uh, packaging session you don't need to go very fine into packaging you can just terminate or simulate till the end of the transmission line you can simulate just a one uh, circulator and see how the uh, coupling and how the isolation between the ports are coming and that can be used in circuit so uh, finally you will you will connect this into a antenna array so this is going for one antenna element so same hfss design you can use it for the all the antenna element you can combine it and simulate it once your systems works fine in the uh, sub like co simulation with the different different module what you can do is you can model the complete system complete system consists of power divider everything so you will solve it you will be able to see how the signals are propagating how the radiation pattern comes so this is the actual system and this is the pattern this is how the radiation coming out coming to the uh, problem this is just one section of this array and you need to solve complete this entire array to see the complete radiation pattern so this will be a huge simulation in terms of memory and the computation effort and everything uh, we can see how these problems are tackled by the simulation softwares okay so coming into antenna array design step by step process here it actually starts with the uh, uh, antenna selection so if you are using any software they will have an antenna toolkit in hfs also it has and there is an antenna toolkit comes free with hfs it has almost 70 now it is about 80 antennas are there 
So you just have to select the antennas in their list and select enter the center frequency, the material, and then it will automatically calculate what should be the dimensions. The moment you uh, click it, it will automatically create it. You just have to run the analysis. Then you will be able to see what is this parameter, what is the radiation pattern which is coming out, how the fields are coming out. All these things you can do as a post-processing. So there is a one interesting thing which is there in HFSS is a real-time tuning. So once you simulate the uh, antenna, you can, uh, there is a, uh, video also available in the YouTube. You can change the parameter of the antenna in real time and immediately you will be able to see how this parameter is going to change. It. Okay, so that's a good uh, option. So you can tune the antenna in real time with the very just a single simulation rather than multiple parameter simulation. This works fine for a very small uh, percentage of tuning. If you are going for very large number of parameter, this for oh, this can uh, deviate from the actual designs. So if you take an antenna array, how it can be solved is you don't need to simulate the complete antenna to get the radiation pattern. So you can use the uh, one of the antenna from the array and use the pattern multiplication method. So you can see the pattern multiplication methods. What it assume is uh, if you take this antenna, it will have a separate radiation pattern. And whatever the antenna elements are there, you can assume these all are the isotropic antenna. And with respect to the antenna spacings, the number of antennas, uh, you can calculate array factor. Array factor is the radiation pattern of an isotropic antenna. So array factor you can calculate and multiply that array factor with the, the, the pattern of your single element. That will give you radiation pattern. Okay, so there is a lot of advantages, disadvantage with that one. The advantages are, uh, there are different types of units. Okay, there are people who design for rectangular type, a triangular type. So you need to have a different different types of unit cell to simulate it. So the uh, the advantage with the unit cell elements are, uh, you can say, it's difficult to tune your antenna by placing in a very large system. So if the moment you place a periodic boundary around the antenna you can simulate just a unit cell and make sure uh, this antenna is working at a required frequency. So this antenna was designed for 28 gigahertz, so you can simulate with a, just a single antenna. The moment you set a, a lattice pair or periodic boundary, it assumes that this element sits at the center of an infinite array. All the arrays are also equally radiate when the simulation starts. So there will be a mutual coupling effect that actually detune the antenna when the moment you place it in the array system. So that can be simulated with a, just a single antenna element. You can easily tune it. Uh, most of the antennas also will have a red ohm. So you need to do a parametric simulation and identify what should be the thickness of the red ohm in order to have a less ray reflection at that particular uh, frequency and the different uh, angle of incidence. And even you can also see the, by simulating a single design, you can see how the gain going to be for the antenna and you can steer the radiation pattern and see how the gain or how much is the gain reductions. So this is an antenna, just a single antenna from this antenna, you will be able to see how the signal going or field is going to radiate it out, how the radiation pattern, you're going to get it for different array configurations. Uh, how you can do the beam steering. You can even steer the beam and see how the radiation pattern going to be in the actual systems. So there are some limitations also because you are simulated using a periodic boundary, assuming that this antenna sits on an infinite array. But in actual system, you have a finite size. So the antenna which is radiating here uh, will have a pattern, but that pattern will not match with the elements which are at the edges. So there will be edge effect, which is neglecting here. Uh, there are some limitations. People will be difficult to set the different excitation phase for a unit cell. Uh, if you want to simulate something like a sparse array and other thing, uh, it is also a little challenge with the new unit cell analysis. Uh, so the simulation tools, they came with a method called a, a finite array domain decomposition method. What they will, they will do is they will just simulate one unit cell and mesh the element. Okay, it will create an adaptive mesh and make sure this mesh is very good 
in order to solve the complete problem. So once the mesh is created, that mesh will be duplicated for the complete array. Let's say you are going to simulate for 10 by 10 array. Uh, this mesh, the single element mesh will be duplicated across it. Once the mesh is duplicated, what it will do is it will solve the complete antenna in a, a, a full manner and it will give you how the radiation going to be. So this is just a quick video. It's showing how the uh, finite array works. You are just modeling one antenna and then duplicating the antenna for your required number of elements. Once the elements are set, you can create the antenna into different shapes like a triangular or circular kind of an array. If you, if you want, you can even remove some of the elements in the antenna array system and see. So most of the time, some of the elements can get damaged and even you can see how the performance of the antenna even with the different uh, elements are not working. Okay, so this is antenna pattern. This is how it works. And you, what you're getting is you will be able to individually select and see how the S parameter or impedance of the antenna is going to vary. And over here, the advantage with these methods are the speed up is the one thing and you can make a different types of antenna. You can do a beam steering and other thing. The limitations are for 5G application, you are using sp the spatial multiplexing and a lot of uh, techniques in order to steer to different uses. So that requires uh, uh, in an phased array itself, there can be one type of element, there can be another type of elements and uh, uh, different polarizations. So many things can come together. Along with that, most of the base station or antenna array, that just not an antenna array. It has to protect with a radome from for the external environment. That radome has to pass the signal through the antenna. So these all are the some of the limitation with the current finite array method, which are most of the softwares already have it. So ANSYS came with something innovative. So it's called a 3D component array that's mainly developed for 5G application. What it will do is, let's say I have a uh, dual polarized dipole antenna with a radome system. Okay, this is my actual antenna. What I will do is I will divide the antenna system into uh, multiple cell sections. So if I see the complete system, I can recreate this complete array with this four unit cell. So I have a dipole, uh, cross dipole. What I will do is uh, I can place this dipole around this complete area. So that is the number one. Second one is the edge of the radome. So I have a unit with an edge. I can place it at the edge. I have a corner. So I will place at the four corners, this third element. I can place these four uh, elements across the outer side of this. This is fourth element is nothing but the air. So the advantage is these adapting meshing for these four elements will happen in parallel. So you are getting the very good meshing, which is happening in parallel. Uh, earlier, all elements are same. Uh, there was no computational much challenges, but here what happening is this element and this elements are totally different. So the gluing the non-conformal mesh at the interference is a big, big task for the computation, numerical computation side. So that was cracked by HFSS team. So they are now able to simulate it. So what advantage you are going to get is, uh, see, this simulation was taking the 135 minutes with the 92 GB. Now that reduced to just 18 GB and 12 minutes. So even with a laptop with a good configuration, you can run the uh, base station simulation. And the results are pretty same. So did a validation with the, so many number of elements. So this is what happening in the background. These four elements are uh, meshing. Uh, parallelly. So you can see these elements are meshed. Once the elements are meshed, that mesh will be duplicated wherever the numbers are there. So you can see the elements are duplicating. The radomes are duplicating. So you can see rather than the CAD, you can see the how the mesh is generated over here. Okay. And stitching over on this one. So this is our 256 uh, elements. 5G antenna systems. It has a, a four subarray. So the, each one is eight by eight array and uh, working at a 28 gigahertz. 
and this will be like vertical polarization another will be horizontal polarizations so you can uh, divide the problem into many and uh, then you can model that one so this will uh, include all the finite edge effect multiple elements types can be simulated all dummy and failure effects can be simulated and the good thing is once you simulate it if you see the com simulation result uh, it was taking about uh, 13 hours simulation with 432 gb it reduced to 276 gb and you can see simulation time also reduced drastically and it is if you have more number of machine you can paralyze the simulation and you can further simulate this problem just within like one and a half hour and the advantage with the same thing is just one simulation you can individually select different ports and see how the coupling going to be from one port to the another and just in one simulation all post processing can be done so you can steer the beam here and there and see how the radiation pattern going to be also you can this is some coupling matrix if i port one is radiating how much is coming to port two how much is coming to port three like all port uh, metrics also can be visible. So this is uh, not only applicable to just an array. So if I have a, a corporate with a series feeds and then at 77 gigahertz, I can divide this problem into this one. So these elements are repeating at multiple places where these elements are not much repeating. Still divide the problem into any problem. You can just divide into multiple cells and then you can simulate it over here you can see the fields are very continuous so you can see the field which is the spurious emission coming from the power divider sections are also captured well and coming into the radiation patterns pattern also match pretty well uh, these all are some of the comparisons you can see uh, 34 hour gb simulation is to 10 dgb and uh, 32 minute simulation are used to 5 gbc ram requirement this is for a uh, same method with the 3d component versus the finite array the old method you can see the finite array and 3d component array uh, both were able to simulate the simulation time 31 minutes reduced to five minutes in the new method and memory also reduced drastically this is on the uh, dual vivaldi antenna array and what i did is uh, can we apply this for this technique for a different application such as uh, filter design so i took a filter from hfss and divide this problem into two means i just cut the filter into two sections and use the 3d component method and i could see the the same identical fields coming in both design the yes, parameters are also matching pretty well and you can see over here the memory requirement also coming up so in the new features of hfss you can see lot more enhancement currently this is a manual process you can manually you have to manually cut the geometry i think the development is working on the automation side it will automatically cut it and then simulate the different parts in different systems and finally clip the results together so that's all from my side on the phased array i have a couple of sim slides but uh, because of the time limitation we, are, we can stop here it, just, yeah. it was really, really pleasing experience to have you with us, and you shared very, very vital information with us. I hope that this knowledge sharing will be continuing. I have yeah, a plan sure. to, I have a plan to bring you uh, again. Maybe you can talk uh, on another topic. You are a very yeah. resourceful person, and having a very good command on HFSs and antenna engineering. So we are very lucky to have you in our group. And, yeah uh, thank, thanks Hazard. thank you so much yeah okay so, so we'll catch up sometime later yep sure and thank you the audience for uh remaining with us we will be again in touch in another episode in another webinar till then i hope all you all of you are good health and uh, keep active in our antenna lab group so that uh, whenever the new webinar comes uh, you can get the notification Thank you again. Thanks all. We are signing off.